Today I'm going to be showing you how to assemble the frame for the Thresher by Good Venture Drones. Um, the Thresher is a type of shark with a large tail fin and the name seems appropriate because included in the kit will be this shark fin. Um, and this is for helping you to uh, turtle when you're upside down so that it keeps two props out of the grass, assuming the grass is fairly short and also to protect the antenna should you decide to run an antenna on the back of the shark fin. So included in your kit are these carbon pieces. Bottom plate, four arms, a top plate, and a front arm brace. I recommend running the front arm brace to help protect the camera and also to stiffen up um, the arms. Optionally you can purchase more arm braces at spares or to run one on the rear. So those are the carbon parts. And also included in the kit should be this hardware. Four M3x8 screws for the top plate, nine M3 nuts, lock nuts, nine lock nuts, nine M3x12 screws, and there's nine for a reason, eight M3x14 screws, and four of these will go into the center of the arm and will be held by the uh, M3 by 25 millimeter standoff, aluminum standoff. And these four um, are for the flight controller stack. And we'll go into the nylon standoffs for the flight controller. Uh, before you start, I recommend these tools. A two millimeter hex key uh, screwdriver, um, an M3 nut driver, and optionally pliers for installing uh, an SMA, not included, this should be part of your unifier, whatever VTX you, you have, uh, for installing this into the shark fin. So to begin by assembling the frame, it's important to note that each arm only has three motor screws. And three motor screws are perfectly fine. I recommend using steel. Um, you can use aluminum, um, but steel um, will be the best for durability. And for the front, um, depending on your motors, so these are 5 millimeter arms and 3 millimeter brace, which is 8 millimeters. So depending on the um, motor base, you may have to use M3x10 or possibly M3x12. Most of the new motors now have fairly thick bases, so M3x12, but be careful if it's too long, you will screw, your, um, screw into the windings and ruin your motor. So test with them 3x10 or look at your base to determine which one you need. So notice the arms go in, uh, can, can be mounted in either direction. However, if you mount it this way and use the brace, only one screw will be holding the arm brace. So I highly recommend mounting the arms so that two of the motor screws line up with the other two and that way you can use the brace on the bottom and line up all four screws and you'll get the stiffest frame that way. So for each arm, an M3 by 12 goes into the sides and an M3 by 14 goes into the center. The tolerances are fairly close. You may have to partially screw in some of these screws. Those are the two M3x12s, and that's the M3x14. The lock nuts will go on the M3x12 screws, and the standoff will go on the M3x14. I highly recommend, although I don't have it here, I highly recommend using Loctite on the M3x14 screw, never on the uh, nylon. Loctite will ruin nylon and plastic. So, lock, uh, nylocks for the M3x12. Loctite for the M3x14 and then standoff. I'm just going to put the standoff here. And we'll tighten that down. And you can only get the standoff down so much, but then once you put the screw in on the top plate, that'll tighten it down. So we'll go ahead and do the other three arms. Uh, I'd like to note that in the back here, this is for an XT60. Um, I, you can hold the XT60 wires with a zip tie by going through these two holes. Uh, but they are spaced for a Raycon XT60 mount, which is up to you to purchase. Um, and then some people just like to use an XT, uh, zip tie, so that'll be fine. That's the default method. We'll 
put this aside. I have an assembled frame already. I've used aluminum here just to show where the lock nuts go. Um, and you can use aluminum. However, be, be aware that uh, it is softer and may strip. I would not use aluminum on these arm screws. Um, in a crash, I've had these shear before. With three, I don't know if that'll happen, but I wouldn't risk it. I would use metal for the arm screws. Um, you can use aluminum nuts, purchase on your own, they're quite expensive. Um, and then here's the uh, Raycon XC60 mount that I've mentioned. That's optional, again, for you to purchase. Uh, the kit will come with camera, TPU camera mounts. And here's the fully assembled. This is how you would install the screws for the flight stack. So if you have four of those, your 401 ESC, which is highly rec recommended. These arms are only 10 millimeters wide, so putting separate ESCs is possible, but they will stick out. So if you put your 401 here, your flight controller, and then whatever you use to mount your flight controller. So here we're going to install the shark fin. If you'll note, the shark fin goes on with a tab. Just like that. And then, of course, the front will lift, but that ninth set of M3x12 screw and lock nut is what takes care of that. So if you screw this in and then put a lock nut on the other side, that will prevent uh, this fin from going anywhere. So you'll notice this shark fin has the ability to have an SME where you can put your stubby antenna, and it'll be well protected from hitting gates. Etc. and also keeps the antenna out of, uh, out of the props versus sticking an antenna out of the back of a quad sometimes it gets into the propellers so I, this is my preferred method however to do this you have to insert this in here and have it go through here so let me show you how to do that, it's quite easy so this SMA just goes in like that and you'll notice there's a little bit of a notch off to the side on each side. So you can have this go in either side, whatever is more convenient for your VTX mounting. It's symmetrical. So hold it there. Now I'm going to insert this, the tab, into this hole. And I'm going to slide it in diagonally on the opposite side of the RG316. I'm going to I'm, I'm going to put it in this side first and then this side will go in kind of like a shoehorn. So that just went in fairly easy and now you just have to slide this back and now the SMA is in there and then the trick not much left to it is to put this SMA you'll notice that uh, it's it can take an SMA with or without these metal tabs if you don't use the metal tabs you may have to have a uh, uh, a nut to hold it in place but the TBS version there's a slot for it in the actual shark fin mount, and this is where the pliers come in. So it's going to go at an angle. You just have to tweak it just a little bit and push this. There you go. That was easy. So now you have a mount, and you can see where the, the tabs go into the fin. And that way, you don't need a nut, and you can just put on your stubby antenna pretty tightly and not have to worry about that twisting down there. And then this will go into your VTX. So just an example. And again, aluminum screws are optional, but they're completely up to you. Oh, actually, let's go ahead and screw the... Uh, the hole in TPA is about 2.2 to 2.5 millimeters, so it's going to be a little bit of a tight fit but that way you can thread this screw. You have to kind of push so push a little bit hard. Once the threads catch, it'll just thread itself in. And again, I'm just using aluminum hardware for my personal builds.
and so that will stay. And then of course, I would recommend using Loctite on these four screws that go into the top plate. Never use Loctite on plastic, nylon, just metal to metal. Again, any aluminum hardware is optional and up to you to purchase. Um, this is a 6S build. And here's the purpose of the shark fin. Turtle mode, out of grass. You would flip this way. <laughs>